Welcome to the Partner Report. My name is Claudia Pampel. I work for the Interreg Central Europe Joint Secretariat, and I will guide you through the different section of the Partner Report. In order to have access to the reporting section, the project needs to be at least set to status contracted. In order to have access to the partner reports of a partner, the user needs to be assigned to a project partner in the project privileges. This is done by the lead partner. The lead partner, let's have a look how the lead partner sees the report. The lead partner should have view access to all partner reports in order to be able to aggregate the data on project level. The settings are done in the project privileges. So here, for each project partner, the lead partner should be assigned with view access rights. So to their own um, partner report, the lead partner would have edit access right, while for the project partners, um, the lead partner would have view access right, right in order to aggregate the data. Let's have a look how it looks for partner four. So we have different users assigned to this project partner, partner four as being the main uh, user of the project partner with edit rights and also access to the sensitive data. This is uh, sensitive data falling under the general data protection regulation, GDPR and um, only a, a user with um, this sensitive data set to active can um, fill in information on sensitive data and can view information that was filled in under sensitive data. We will hear about that later on. The lead partner um, should be granted view access rights. And uh, here we have another user of partner four with view access and uh, no access right to sensitive data. What can also be seen here in the project privilege settings is uh, who is the control institution, while for partner three, no control institution is assigned. For partner four, we have a control institution assigned. In order to create a partner report, uh, go to the left menu and select the partner. Um, in order to create a report, click Add Partner Report. A new partner report uh, will show up. It, the numbering of the report, which is shown here and here, is an automatic numbering done by the system. It does not reflect the reporting period. Upon creation, the report is in status draft and will then uh, um, in travel to um, submit it, status control ongoing, and uh, finally the status certified. Information on the partner is taken from the application form, um, also the local currency in which the partner is reported is shown here. Um, how this local currency is then converted into euro, we will see um, when we discuss uh, how the list of expenditure is filled in. You can see also to which application form the report is linked. Uh, it's always the report, uh, the application form version that was valid uh, upon creation of the partner report. This is um, especially important in case the project has a modification, then we have to make sure that the partner report is always linked to the correct uh, version of the application form. Yeah, data from the latest approved application form is taken into the report and uh, is then used especially for uh, reporting on the, the work plan uh, and on the expenditures. Uh, the partner report is divided in different sections. 
it's the reporting section, work plan progress, public procurement, list of expenditures, contribution, report annexes, report export, and there is more to see. Um, the financial overview and the submit button. Okay, uh, so you can scroll through the tabs or you can also uh, hide the left menu and then you have the full screen. To go back to the overview, you can uh, either click here in the top menu or you go through the left menu and say go back to partner board and you will have the overview uh, in the overview, um, you will see the ID, um, which is automatically done by the system, not reflecting the periods. Um, you can see the status. So this partner has two reports, one uh, that was already submitted to the controller and the control work is ongoing. And the other one is the one that we just created. It's still in draft. Uh, you can also see in which project report uh, a partner report was included later on by the lead partner. You see the application form version that was uh, to which the report is linked. The reporting period will show up once it is selected uh, in the when filling in the report. The date when the report was created. The date of First submission of the report, the date of last submission of the partner report. This is um, important because a partner report can be reopened uh, for um, improving the information, doing uh, amendments, corrections, um, and uh, a partner report can then be resubmitted. Um, so you will always see the date of first submission and uh, the date of last submission. You can see then also once filled in the amount uh, submitted with the report and how much was uh, considered eligible by the controller. Also here we can do some scrolling. Um, so a partner report um, can be deleted uh, as long as it is in status draft. And uh, only the most recent partner report in status drop can be deleted in this overview table. Partner report identification. Upon creation of a report, um, the user will land automatically on the first tab, uh, which is the report identification. Here, uh, key information is taken from the application form that was valid at the moment of creation of the partner report. Um, and um, the version, the information on the to which application form version the report is linked is displayed uh, here in this overview. In this overview, can you can also uh, see um, the status of the partner report. So um, the Partner reports travels from draft to submitted, control ongoing, and then in the end, uh, the partner report uh, gets the status certified. Based on the country indicated for the partner in the application form, um, the currency is displayed. So this partner is from Hungary. The local currency is therefore foreign. How uh, the local currency is converted into euro, we will discuss when we have a look into the tab uh, list of expenditure. The partner report needs to be linked to a period. So here we have selected period one and we have to define the um, start date uh, and the end date uh, of the reporting period. The, um, the reporting periods and start and end dates are defined uh, in the project subsidy contract and also in the project monitoring plan. Uh, the summary description 
of the partner work um, can be provided uh, in this section and uh, in case um, the partner faced problems or there were deviations from the work plan, um, such information should be in highlighted highlighted in A3. The partner spending profile gives an overview on the spending targets as defined in the application form and the reported expenditure um, is uh, filled in uh, in the partner report. So this section will update um, once you have filled in expenditure for the report. And uh, what is interesting, um, especially for the lead partner, you can uh, give an outlook into the upcoming uh, period. So you can uh, give an information forecast on how much you expect to spend in the next uh, period. In case uh, there are um, deviations um, in this spending profile, this can be explained uh, in this text box and uh, also reporting on the target groups um, can be done here. The target gr groups that show up uh, are based on the information in the application form. The second tab, work plan progress, takes the work plan related data from the last approved application form and it's organized along uh, the work packages. In order to open the work package, click uh, on the unfold uh, button. And um, here you can uh, fill in the partner's contribution to the work package in the reporting period. This should be described in this text box. Um, Information on the progress to any activity should be provided. So this is described in the progress for the activity. And uh, you should especially highlight if deliverables outputs were finalized. Uh, because for the delivery, there is no description. So. In the activity description, you provide the information, how you contributed to the project activities and related deliverables and outputs in these reporting periods. And uh, um, you should specifically highlight if deliverables or outputs were finalized. In case of investment, please report on the contribution uh, in the text box of the concerned project activity. Supporting documents can be uploaded. Uh, it's only one upload possible uh, per um, activity or deliverable. And in case you have uh, several documents, please upload them as a zip or rail file and file names should be self-explanatory. Coming to the deliverables, Deliverables to which the partner contributed in the reporting period can be selected. And uh, supporting documents can be uploaded. And as uh, said earlier, only one document can be uploaded. And in case of several documents, please use the zip or rare file function. Um, yeah. Then for the outputs, also here um, indicate whether you contributed to a certain um, output in this uh, period and uh, if um, applicable, upload a supporting document. And don't forget to save the changes. Click procurements. The public procurement section is where a partner should fill in information on project-related procurement. This applies for contracts above 10,000 euro, excluding VAT, unless stricter national rules apply. 
For details, prefer, please refer to our program manual. Regardless in which report a procurement is added, it will show up in the following partner reports. Click on Add Procurement and the procurement item opens for filling in the required information. Fields marked with an asterisk are obligatory. A pro procurement item can only be saved once all obligatory fields are filled in. So we fill in here information and now the item can be created. Now you will see that the procurement item has an edit uh, mode and uh, details can be filled in or updated. Editing is not possible after submission of the report. The contract name as defined here in uh, the public procurement section is later also used in the list of expenditures. And it's uh, important for uh, if you would like to link an expenditure item to a procurement. Please make sure that uh, the name is distinct so that the procurement item can be easily identified in the list of expenditure. For procurement, the following information should be provided. The contract name, as already mentioned, a reference number, contract date, the contract type, the amount of the contract and the uh, currency, the supplier name and VIT number. If needed, a comment can be added. In order to go back to the overview, click on the arrow and uh, the procurement item um, upon saving gets an um, available in this overview table. Um, and in order to delete the procurement item, if uh, it was wrongly filled in, um, it can be deleted. The procurement item can only be deleted and edited in, a re in the report where it was created as long as the report is in draft status. The information under which report a procurement was created is displayed in the overview table as well as in the detail view. So it, you have here the information created in. So this item was created in partner report number two. And if you go to the detailed view, you will also see the information that the re, uh, procurement item was created in report two. For um, procurements above the EU threshold, it's obligatory to provide information on the beneficial owners. Such information is not required for procurements below the threshold. In order to fill in this section, click on the Add Beneficial Owner button. Also here, information marked with the red asterisk is obligatory. It needs to be filled in. If, uh, before you can say the changes. For procurements above the EU threshold, it's also um, required to provide information on the subcontractors if applicable. Such information is not required for procurement below the EU threshold. Also here to add a subcontractor, click on the button, add subcontractor, um, fill in the information and VIT number is obligatory, but this is filled in. Um, the information can be changed and it's also possible to delete the information. Attachments can be uploaded and we have uh, two um, types of uploads. We have uh, the normal attachments that are uh, visible for um, the all users and we have GDPR related attachments um, that are uh, visible only to privileged uh, users. GDPR attachments uh, 
are attachments or are documents that fall under the general data protection regulation and should be restricted and thus um, make sure that you upload it in the GDPR attachment section. Only a user with the edit rights uh, and, and the privileged GDPR sensitive data set in the project privileges can upload documents. So um, this means in the project privileges, you can see which partner has uh, access or to sensitive data. So for partner four, it's only one user who has access to sensitive data. The other users can access this uh, partner report of partner four, but would not see sensitive data. And only the user with uh, edit rights and um, the sensitive data activated can upload attachments in the procurement section of the partner report under the GDPR section. Sorry, we go to the partner report. Here we are. And we were in the public procurement section. Yeah, this is it for the partner uh, report public procurement section. Current cost in original currency. By clicking on add expenditure, the partner can add expenditure items, and this is done one by one. To delete an expenditure item, just click on the delete item. The list of expenditure section is subdivided in uh, several sections uh, in order to see all the sections, you need to scroll or you unfold um, the, or hide the left menu where this can be unfold and hidden. And if it's hidden, you can see the full um, list of expenditure section. Upon creation, um, the Expenditure item gets an ID. The ID reflects uh, the report number. So this item was re created in report eight. Uh, it's a running number and uh, the ID number is dynamic as long as the report is still in draft status. So if I um, add several items and I have to select uh, the obligatory field in order to save the item. Now the ID has changed. The question mark is replaced by a running number. And as long as the report is still in status draft and I remove an expenditure item, the ID number is updated. Once a partner report was submitted, the ID number is frozen and does not change anymore, which allows a correct follow-up and in of the expenditure items in following reports. What else is possible uh, for the list of expenditure? You have here this um, symbol which shows that uh, you can mark an expenditure item as uh, sensitive data under the general data protection regulation. Um, this GDPR flag can be set and uh, it impacts on the description field, on the comment field and the attachment and only users with access right to GDPR sensitive data uh, set active in the project privileges can have access to this section. So the lead partner can steer in the project privileges. I save the information first. Um, can 
the lead partner can set here who has uh, access to sensitive data. So for partner two, the partner has edit rights and access to sensitive data, while the lead partner has view access to the partner report and uh, no access rights to sensitive data. So make sure that uh, the partner who fills in the partner report has edit rights and uh, sensitive data activated in order to um, allow a proper working in the partner report. We go back to the partner report and the list of expenditure section. Yeah, uh, items that are marked as uh, GDPR sensitive, um, as I said, users, partner users with um, the access right not activated will not see the description and comment field and also not the attachments. However, a controller, because the controller needs to check uh, the reported expenditure and supporting documents, has uh, always access to these uh, sections by default. Cost category. The cost category uh, field is links a cost item to a cost category. And the cost category are is defined in the ex uh, application form. So um, a partner who has selected a flat rate might have a limited drop-down menu um, than other partners. The cost category is um, also here is an obligatory field. So this information always needs to be filled in in order to allow to save uh, the expenditure item. Investment information can be filled in. So in case a project has uh, an investment defined in the application form, the investments are listed in the drop-down menu of the report and uh, for expenditure items under cost category five equipment or cost category six in infrastructure and work um, can be linked to an investment while staff costs, for example, it's not possible to link to an investment. Contract name. The contract name is linked to information that was defined in the public procurement section. So in the public procurement section, you can define uh, contracts and the contract names is then available uh, in the list of expenditure, and you can link an expenditure item to the public procurement that was uh, created earlier. Uh, the field is not applicable for staff costs. Internal reference number can be used to identify the expenditure. The invoice number uh, can be used also to be used to identify the expenditure. The invoice date uh, is a date picker field. Um, also the date of payment uh, is a date picker option. You can provide a description. You can fill in the comment. And uh, the total invoice value is the total value, including VAT, that should be filled in. The, declare, the VAT uh, can be filled in where applicable. And the declared amount is the value the partner claims as basis for reimbursement. Uh, meaning that this is the amount that will be checked by the controller for eligibility. If uh, a partner 
uh, is in a non-euro country, the a different currency will show up um, and uh, is the value is the basis for an automatic calculation of the declared amount in euro. What is maybe also important to mention here is that partners receiving ERDF is as direct state aid under the general block exemption re regulation, the GBER, shall declare expenditure net of VAT that is recoverable by the partner according to the applicable national legislation. Currency, the partner has to select the currency of the declared amount. Um, this partner is in a, a Euro country a eurozone country and uh, therefore uh, reporting is only possible in euro for partners coming from another country than a euro country the currency is automatically set by the system to the currency of the country the partner is coming from and there is the conversion rate also displayed the conversion is done based on the exchange rate applicable at the moment of first submission of the partner report. So as long as the uh, report is in draft, the conversion rate still can change. But once the report was first submitted, the conversion rate is fixed. In case you would like to upload um, more than one document, please uh, upload a zip or a rare file. So I will upload I it shows here. Um, and um, what is uh, interesting to see is that once an attachment was uploaded, the expenditure item is not deletable. You first need to delete the file. And only then you uh, are able to delete the expenditure item. Here we have an example um, for park expenditures in the list of expenditure. So um, this is a partner who has already the partner report seven. Um, and in the list of expenditure, in addition to the list of expenditure where you list all the expenditure that you would like to include in the current, um, so in this case, report seven um, of the partner report uh, can be added as explained earlier. And uh, this partner has a park, a park expenditure stemming from an earlier report. So it's from report uh, number one uh, and it was expenditure item two. So in case further clarification is needed, a controller can park uh, expenditure item, meaning uh, put an expenditure item on hold uh, for final verification in a later partner report. Um, this allows the controller to finalize the control work and to um, issue the control documents and uh, leave a uh, one or more expenditure items um, open for further clarification uh, and re-inclusion in a later report. So in case a controller has parked an expenditure item, um, they show up in this parked expenditure overview. Uh, and a partner can now decide either to re-include the item in the partner report by uh, Clicking on the item, on the re-include, and you confirm. And then the parked uh, item shows up in the normal list of expenditure. However, you would still recognize it uh, through the ID number. So this is partner report seven. Um, expenditure items with the ID R7 and the uh, running number come from the current report, while um, this expenditure item uh, stem stems from an earlier report. It's a parked item that was re-included. It was from report 
number one of this partner. When the item gets re-included, it will be uh, included in the list of expenditure um, and it's editable for changes by the, to be done by the partner, um, except for the ID is frozen and the exchange rate and the currency are frozen. So the declared amount can be changed. However, the conversion rate, um, in case it's a non-euro country, will remain the conversion rate as, uh, as first submission of the report of referring to the park expenditure item. If the item is uh, removed, it's removed from all reports, not only uh, and will not show up as a packed uh, expenditure item anymore. Partner contributions. So these sections of the section of the partner report um, has only to be filled in by those partners benefiting from external financial contributions to the budget. This section is therefore disconnected from the financial overview tables. So information filled in here does not uh, show up in the financial overview, it's disconnected. This section is pre-filled with information on sources on partner contribution as provided in the application form. Um, important to mention that partners which receive ERDF from the program as stated under the general block exemption regulation cannot receive any additional contributions to their budget. So this is the section where the partner should report on the actual received partner contributions. It's a cumulative section which records the amount received per reporting period and adds them up in the next partner reports. The first row always shows the partner's own organization, own contribution, similar as in the application form. And uh, this partner has, in addition to their own contribution, also a national contribution defined, and that's in the application form, and this is shown up here. The partner can also add additional contributions by clicking on this plus button. Information marked in red is obligatory and uh, needs to be filled in prior to saving the changes. When a new report is created, it takes into account the value of all previously submitted reports at the moment. Therefore, in order to have the correct amounts in the columns previously reported and total reported so far, make sure that the partner reports are submitted before you open a new report. Attachments can be uploaded as supporting documents. Uh, it's always one file that can be uploaded uh, in case uh, you have several documents, please uh, put the uh, documents into a zip or rare file and upload this zip file. Additional contributions that were added by mistake can also be removed. Report annexes. This section of the partner report gives you an overview on all the documents uploaded for the report so far. So in the partner report uh, overall um, view, you can see all the attachments that were uploaded. While if you go to the subsections, you can access the files uploaded for work plan progress, for the list of expenditure, um, for the public procurement, and contributions, but for contributions, no files were uploaded. So to 
have the overview on all uploads, go to the partner report. And from here, you can add a description. You, you can download the file. And in order to remove, to delete the file, you would need to go to the section where the file was uploaded. So here it's a file uploaded in the work plan. So you go back to the work plan and it's here that you can delete the file. And then it also will not show up here in the uploads section anymore. Report export, as you already know it from the application form, um, the report can be printed to PDF and uh, financial overview tables will be exportable to Excel files. In order to do so, uh, once available, um, select the respective export plugin. Um, the language settings, since our program runs in English only, is um, always put to English. And upon selection of the plugin, you will be able to export the PDF or Excel file and you can save the report or print the data. Financial overview table. The financial overview section uh, comes with four different financial overview tables. Um, the financial overview tables show how the partner is proceeding in terms of spending. The amounts included in the tables represent the aggregated data from all partner reports submitted. At the moment, the current partner report is created. Therefore, it's important that uh, when a new report is created, that um, you make sure that partner reports uh, referring to earlier periods are no longer in draft status. All amounts are shown in euro and um, there's an automatic conversion into euro. A partner with expenditure in other currency than euro uh, should be aware that exchange rates are updated monthly as long as the partner report is in draft status. Um, the conversion rate is fixed upon first submission of the partner report uh, and uh, stays frozen. Even if a partner report is reopened for amendments and resubmitted, the exchange rate uh, stays with, with the exchange rate applicable at the moment of first submission of the partner report. Let's have a look at the diff uh, different overview tables. The partner expenditure summary um, shows the EADF um, co-financing and the partner contribution. And the partner contribution is split into public, automatic, public, and private contribution. Um, this is uh, based on the information as set in the partner contribution uh, in the application form. Information on the calculation can be looked up in the info bubble. The partner total eligible budget comes from the application form. Previously reported column shows um, amounts from partner reports previously submitted, but also the partner's share in the preparation and contracting lump sum. Also here, the info bubble provides information on the calculation. Current report uh, shows the amounts uh, included in the current report. Total reported so far sums up previously reported and current report. The remaining budget column indicates the difference between the total reported so far and the partner total eligible from the application form. This value become, can become negative in case the reported expenditure exceeds the budget in the approved application form. Previously paid column sums up the payments done by the program and uh, only payments done by the program when the partner report was created are taken into account. Budget 
break down their cost category. Um, this table mainly works uh, as the summary table uh, with some specialities. So um, here uh, we have uh, the flat rate indicated um, and the flat rate uh, is based on the budget option settings in the application form. What else is different uh, or special here is uh, uh, the lump sum. Lump sum is uh, indicated as a separate row uh, of the table. Lump sums uh, are never um, added up in specific cost categories and flat rates are not calculated on top of the lump sums. For the flat rates, uh, it's uh, also interesting to, to note that the calculation in the overview table is done on the totals declared in the current report uh, in order to have less rounding difference in relation to the flat rates as they are calculated they are calculated on top of the total sums and not on top of each individual cost item. The overview tables uh, show the reported amount and also indicate the uh, amount uh, that were parked by the controller or the amounts that were re-included uh, parked expenditure items that were re-included in the report. Partner uh, expenditure breakdown per lump sum. If uh, a lump sum is used by the project, um, this um, table is shown, otherwise it's hidden. It uh, shows um, the preparation and contracting cost lump sum um, and uh, reporting and payment of the lump sum. Partner expenditure breakdown for investment. In this overview table, all cost items linked to an investment are summed up. Since for Interreg Central Europe, only real cost apply for investment, the info in the Info bubble does not apply and can be ignored. This uh, table overview table is hidden in case uh, no investments are used in the project. Submission of a partner report. In order to submit the partner report, go to the um, last tab of the partner report um, and uh, click Run pre-submission check. Once all pre-submission checks are successfully run, you can submit the partner report. The partner report is now in status submitted. This is shown in the report identification as well as in the report overview. So you can see this report was just submitted and you have the date of submission recorded in the overview. Reopening of the report. Reopening of the last partner report. So if needed, the controller or the JS can reopen the partner report for adjustments. In our case, it's a reopening of the last partner report, which means a full reopening of the partner report. No data is cleared from the report and all is editable without uh, some exception. Expenditure items, for example, in the list of expenditure. So the expenditure item ID is not uh, editable anymore. It's fixed. And uh, also the currency and the conversion rate are frozen from the initial first submission. No expenditure item can be deleted and no new expenditure item can be added. So no add expenditure item button is available anymore. Parked expenditure is 
uh, available and can be still included in the reopened partner report. In order to do so, click on the re-include icon to include it, or if you want to remove the um, parked expenditure item, you can delete it and it's deleted um, once forever. We re-include the item and it will show up uh, in the list of expenditure and it can be, for example, still marked um, as uh, GDPR sensitive. Um, you can add description and so on. In the procurement section, public procurements, procurements that were created in the current in the current partner report can still be added. It, um, and new procurements can be um, created. However, procurements that were created in an earlier partner report, um, only limited editing is possible. So, for example, um, the equipment um, public procurement item was created in report number six, uh, so in an earlier one. And um, the main information is not editable anymore. However, you could uh, still add the information on the beneficial owner or on subcontractor or upload attachments. For report annexes, let's go to report annexes. So in the report annexes, um, uploads that were done earlier can be changed. So um, cannot be changed, sorry, cannot be changed. They can be downloaded, but cannot be removed. And um, you can still um, upload additional annexes. Report annexes. So if in the report annexes, you can see all the uploads that were done uh, earlier in order to edit or remove um, uploads, you need to go to the section where the upload took place. So um, in the work plan, I have one attachment. I go back to the work plan section. And here, the attachment can be removed and additional uploads can be done. Well, uh, as long as a report is in status reopened, no new partner report can be opened. So add partner report is disabled. Reopening of any partner report that is not the last report. So in our example, uh, we have a reopened report, which is not the last uh, report, but the earlier one. So in such case, uh, different uh, editing rules apply. No data is cleared from the report. And uh, for example, in the list of expenditure, um, only limited uh, editing is possible. For example, the GDPR flagging is still available. Description comment field are editable and attachments can be uploaded. No new expenditure item can be added no expenditure item can be removed and um, park expenditure items are not uh, displayed and not possible to add to such a reopened report. In the public procurement section, existing procurement items cannot be removed. However, there is uh, a possibility to add new beneficial owners or to uh, change information on subcontracts and to upload attachments. 
in the contribution tab. Only the uploading of attachment is possible. All other information is frozen. Report annexes. Also here, the user can add new uploads. How does the resubmission of a reopened report work? You go to the Submit tab. You run the pre-submission checks and submit the partner report. Upon resubmission of a, of a reopened partner report, the partner report goes back to the status from before reopening, namely submitted or control ongoing. The financial overviews are refreshed, reflecting the changes. The partner report overview would also be updated. So we resubmitted report number five. So we have the date of uh, creation, the date of first submission, and date of last submission with the timestamp is updated. Also, the amount submitted updates and, um, yeah the date of last submission, which is important.